Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I have a, a revolutionary sermon for you today. A revolutionary sermon. A sermon that most of you have never heard before. But it will really bless your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's about the woman. It's about the woman. As I say in a couple of sermons about women before, when a woman is not happy, nobody in the house can be happy. Nobody. The children, the husband, who often thinks that he's in charge, he's a man and all that. If the woman is not happy, the man and the children cannot be happy also. Someone said that the man is the head, according to the Bible, right? But the woman is the neck. And guess what? The neck turns the head whatever the neck wants. Amen. So all that to say that the value of the woman in the house cannot be questioned. But uh, that's something that brought this sermon today because often the woman does not, sin, does not feel as value as the man. From one part, it came from herself. And from a second part, it came from society that have often put this woman as a second class citizen. Amen. So I want to bring you a sermon today, Tado. I want to bring you a sermon today, Tado. God created the woman better than the man. God created the woman better than the man. Isn't that something? Some of you say, wow, God created the woman better? Are you sure about that? We will see about that today. Hallelujah. We'll see about that. Like I was saying, women often feel like a second class citizen because the woman was created second. They feel like they have to line up behind the men, implying that men are in the front and the woman is in the back. Women also often feel like they don't have a chance of leading the family. Either if you want to talk biblically or even in society, women don't often have the first place. For generations, women stay at home and take care of children and they cook. The kitchen is the best department and the men go to work and bring the money and, and since money seems to be the biggest element that society values, as the woman was not bringing money into the house, her contribution to the family is looked upon negatively, or at least less value than the contribution of the man. So this has caused the woman to feel like her value is secondary to the man. And when it comes to the Bible, when the word of God said that the woman should submit to the man, that wasn't the situation for the woman who feel like even God has probably created her unfairly. Let me say that again. I said that made the woman to feel like even God might have created her unfairly. Or oh, for some reason, God has decided out of unfairness to put her as a second class citizen. Because now, between the man and the woman, God wants the woman to be submitted. So the woman just feels like she's created with less value than the man. The woman feels like when God is classifying who should be in charge, 
God does not give her an equal chance of competing with men, but God has just decided to make her the second. But the question is, has God created the woman with less value than a man? Has God created the woman to be submitted automatically to the man? I had a sermon on that, why God wants the woman to be submitted. You can watch it on YouTube or whatever. But uh, I'm saying here, has God created a woman with less value, with less quality than the, the man? I'm here to tell you right now that when we dig into the word of God, not only will we say that God has not created a woman with less quality, not, that is not so. But God has not even created a woman with the same quality as a man, but God has created a woman with a better quality than the man. God has created a woman with a better quality than the man, as the title of this message has revealed it. God created a woman better than the man. What does that mean? How can we establish that with the word of God? Grab your Bible. I'm going to cheat today, but from time to time, I can throw some preaching power in to stay up your spirit so something can happen to you. You know something, when you're listening to the, when you're listening to the word of God, we, we need power to infuse into that word. So as you're listening to it, something that is happening to you. Because I realize that many people that have some struggles in their life, they, 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 it's not because they don't know the right thing to do. It's not because of they, they, they are lacking information to change the situation around, but there is some powers that have captivated them. They are victim of something or, or they have been possessed or they are oppressed with something and, and power of God, the power of God need to come out when the, the word of God is being preached. So something can happen to people. So we're going to bring this message as a teaching, but the preaching power of God, the anointing of the Holy Ghost will be circulating also to transform our life. Anytime you come and listen to us, to me, this preacher, I don't know about other preachers, but I always be expecting that anointing, be expecting that moment of fire, be expecting that moment of the anointing of the Holy Ghost to flow, to touch your spirit. So when you are listening to the sermon, something is happening to you. The Bible said the word of God will not return to me in vain. So I doubt that we should go to the house of God and listen to the word of God. And the word of God will not exert an impact on us. The power of God should be flowing to touch us. Hallelujah. God wants somebody to know that. That's not part of what I, I, I have prepared but God wants you to know that when you are listening to this preacher, something is happening to you. The power of God is intervening in your situation. Your spirit, soul, and body is being touched by the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, let me try to behave myself. You know, this thing called the Holy Spirit, he, he does not respect you. When you allow him to be in you, he will take over you. When you yield to him, he will take over you, make you to say things you didn't plan to, to, to say. But, but, but I, I'm, I'm okay with that because I'm not here to do my own work. But it's God doing his work through me. I'm just a servant. I'm just a kind of that God is using. So whatever the spirit of God want to interject in my plans and begin to touch somebody and liberate somebody, I let it happen. Hallelujah. May you be blessed and be touched right now in the name of Jesus. Rake maza ye ferum tako imerebe. Zuriko ze mefon se ketibakore. Nata imere fen ketemba ramini. Hallelujah. There is somebody you are listening to me. There is somebody you are listening to me. Oh, if I were you, I'll say that's me. 
There is somebody you are listening to me. The Spirit of God is touching your life right now. No? You have some problem that God is walking on right now. No? The power of God is flowing on you right now. No? Hey, 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 hey. Nikoma ze brenko se kati ebala. Nemu fe kezimo ze muza ze tede. Ye fari katu mezo me foki e katu kambo zeba. Nirore me fe zukanto keli bebe. In the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray that this moment that is not part of my plan, this saying that I just said because the Spirit of God has taken over me, I pray that this moment be precious to everybody listening to me. Lord, I decree that the problem that is existing in that life, the, 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 the influence of the devil in that life, I command that influence to be canceled right now. By the power of the Holy Ghost uh, in the name of Jesus. You know, a preacher said, instead of organizing, we should be agonizing. <laughs> Let me say that again. A preacher said, instead of organizing, organize this, instead of uh, us mounting the people to, 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 to be organized, to be civilized, to be Hey, together to be intellectual and, and bring in what we think, what we have planned to bring to the people. We need to depend on the Holy Ghost uh, to agonize. Uh, what does that mean? Instead of organizing, agonizing, meaning to pray, meaning to depend on God, meaning to, 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 to expect God to move through me. That just service should not go as planned all the time. Uh, when the Holy Ghost comes in, or the apostle in the eyes of the apostle, in, in, the, in the book of Acts, they did not plan for the Holy Ghost to come that day. They were just in the upper room praying when the Holy Ghost took over everything. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. The inhabitants of the place, they, 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 they saw a smoke coming on the building. That's why they rushed over to see what's going on. There's a smoke that came on them. The power of the Holy Ghost took over them and begin to, they began to speak in other tongues. Languages they did not speak before. The Spirit of God began to move on them in such a way that somebody, some people say, they look like they were drunk. <laughs> that they look like they were drunk. Because the way they were acting was out of the norm. When somebody drunk, the person stumbles. The person doesn't know what he's saying anymore. The Spirit of God make them drunk. They were not drunk of Kevasia. They were not drunk of vodka. They were not drunk of whiskey or garden jeans or, or whatever is out there. But they were drunk with the Holy Ghost, uh, meaning the Holy Spirit took over their life. Uh, whatever they were saying were different than what they planned. Uh, the mind was not connected to the words anymore. Uh, but the mind, the, the, the world was connected to the throne room of God. Uh, the man was connected to the Holy Spirit. Uh, Jesus told the disciple before leaving uh, that I'll send you the comforter. He will guide you in the truth. Uh, hey, my goodness. You see, as I'm talking right now, I feel like controlling myself and, and, and just go with what I came to do. I, I don't normally pre uh, speak in tongues when I'm bringing someone to you, but it came. It came because God needed to be out there. God needed to send to you. If I were you, I would kneel down, I would lift up my head, and I said, God, do what you plan to do in my life. Or oh, through this moment that was unplanned, do what you want to do in my life. Oh, I received those prayers. I want you to change my life. If I were you, I would call upon God right now. If you need to take a pose, take a pose. Pray a little bit. Lay a hand on your suffer. Lay hand on yourself. God is doing something. Everybody that have participated in this moment, you are listening to this sermon from beginning to now, even to the end of this sermon. Something has happened to you. Your situation will never be the same again. Your situation will never be the same again. Watch it. Check it out. Your situation will never be the same again. 
Not because Pastor Angelo has said so. Not because Minister Angelo has said so. But said the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. See, you are so blessed. I can, I can say amen right now and stop preaching. But let, let, let's get some information. Because the Bible says you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. <laughs> oh my goodness. Let me, let me stop. You shall know the truth. So we need to dig in the word of God. Not just getting the spirit. Getting the spirit is good. But we need to dig in the word of God also. So I was saying that God created the woman better than the man. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You can do that anytime, Holy Ghost. You can do that anytime. I live for you. I, I, I don't want me to show. But I want you to show. Anytime I mount the people, take over me. Bless your people as you want. And let the power of heaven be coming in the kingdom to change life for the glory of God. Hallelujah. People, I, I'm sorry. Me, Angelo, I'm sorry for, for that moment. But it's the Holy Ghost, you know, it just took over. And, and I'm blessed myself. I'm blessed. And I'm sure you are blessed too. I'm sure you are blessed. Let me arrange my shirt because I was acting too crazy. And then my shirt got out of... <laughs> my shirt got out of proportion. Let me be, okay, let me see a little civilized now. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Okay, God created the woman better than the man. I was saying that often the woman, the woman, the woman doesn't know her value. Let's just put it that way. The way God created the woman, God created the woman better than the man. That's the title of this month. God created the woman better than the man. I will reveal it to you in the word of God. But the woman doesn't know that. And the woman even look at the fact that God created the man first. Before her, and later God said, you shall be submitted to, to, to the man. The woman just feel like, well, I just don't have a chance. But God created the woman better than the man. Let's see that. Genesis chapter 2. Uh, okay, let's see that. Okay, uh, first let's talk about the creation of man. The creation of man, okay? How did God create the man? We'll get to the woman, okay? Uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the ground. Let's stop there. How did God create a man? Out of the dust. Out of the sand. The sand. Dirt on the floor. God created man with the dust. You say, oh, Brian, so what are you saying by that? God created man with the rough product. With the rudimentary, rudimentary, if that's the word, rudimentary product. With the basic element, God created the man. That's how we, we try to do comparisons here. So before I tell you how God created you better, I'm gonna tell you how God created the man. So you can have the chance to compare. God created the man out of the dust. But you know what women dwell on? What women dwell on is. God created a man first. But how did God create this man? With the dust of the ground. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. God created the man, Adam, with the dust of the ground. Okay. So God created the man with rough products. Don't forget that. Before you think, eh, I'm created second, God want me to be submitted eh, eh, because I, I brought sin into the world and God just punished me so bad. I had to suffer, be pregnant. I have all these confused emotions. I have all these uh, eh, eh, crazy ideas. I like this today. I hate that. I hate that tomorrow. I want this. I want to change it. I'm unpredictable. I'm unstable. I'm fragile. Before you say all that. And the, the truth is, there is, there is a truth in that. That woman is confused. Women don't know what she wants. Today she wants this. Tomorrow she wants that. Today she, 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 she prefers this. Tomorrow she, she that is unstable. Not meaning that she's crazy, but she, her, her mind is just up and down. She wants this. She don't want that. She don't know. She's searching for herself. She's searching for herself. Before you think that the man is created better, the man is created with the dust of the ground. Hallelujah. So the first part of this message, God created 
the, the creation of man. God created the man with the dust. Okay, let's continue. Let's look at the creation of all living things. The creation of all living things. Remember, we are coming. We are coming. We, we, we've seen how God created the woman better. Okay, creation of all living things. So let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. That said, and out of the ground of and out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam. Okay, so verse 19, chapter 2, Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air, meaning the birds. God created everything. Second, after God created men, God created we're just looking at, first we say that God created the, the man, and God now created every beings, all the animals, God created them, before the woman. What does that mean? That means before God created you, the woman, God created the man, and God created all animal. So when you came to the scene, you the woman, everything was ready for you. When Adam came, God didn't create it. The, the animals. I don't have to wait. I don't might be bored with the world, looking at vege vegetation and all that. So God created Adam. And God created all the, 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 the living things. The fish, the, 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 the bird, and the animal. God created all living things before you. Meaning, you are so precious. God didn't want you to come and be bored. God didn't want you to come before he continue creating where you'll be in lack. But God created men and God created the living things before you. Women, please notice that. Before you get into your emotional roller coaster, before you get into pitying for, for, pitying for yourself, pity, pitying for yourself, because before you get into just crying out of no reason, before you get into feel like you are worthless and valueless. Before you feel like, well, I just don't know what I want. I just don't know what I'm doing. Everything is confusing. Before you get into doing all kind of things to cover that you don't have a value. Look at the fact that God created the man and God created the woman before he created you. So when you came, you, you, you come to the sea now, everything is ready for you. Hallelujah, somebody. Okay. Let's continue. Now let's talk about the creation of the woman. You need to double attention now because this is the center part of the message. Okay? The creation of the woman. Let's read Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 and verse 22. Genesis chapter 2, verse 21 and 22. And the, and the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he took one of his ribs and close up the flesh instead thereof. He closed the flesh on, after he took the rib out. He closed the flesh. Verse 22. And the rib which the Lord God has taken from man, made he a woman. Made he a woman. Let's stop right there. So, God now created the woman. Did God create the woman out of the dust? The dead. Daddy. It's daddy. Did God create a woman out of the ground? The ground we walk on. The ground we walk on. Did God use that ground to create a woman? No. God created the man and breathed a living soul into the man. Hear that? Don't forget that. Man is not just formed as an object. God breathed a living soul into him. Genesis chapter 2 verse 7. Say after God created a man, he breathed into him, he became a living soul. God created our living things. Out of the dust also, remember that. Animal and all that, they're created out of the ground too. But you, the woman, did God create you with the dust of the ground? Did he use the sand, the dust, or whatever you call it, to create you, the sand to create you? No. God created the man, and the man was a living thing. So we can say Adam was created out of a, a, a non-living thing. 
an object, the sand, the dust. But you, the woman, he created you out of a living thing. Adam was alive. He can breathe. He can have the breath of God. And God created the woman out of Adam. Out of the finished product. If you don't hear anything, I say hear that. God created Adam out of the ground. Out of the dust. Out of the sand. But God created you, the woman. Out of the finished product. It's like Adam was created with the rough product, the, 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 the raw material. But God created Eve, the woman, with the finished product, the manufactured product. Look at the car. A car is a manufactured product. Look at your phone. Look at even these glasses. These glasses. This, I was told that the, the, the frame of the glass, the, the lens of the glasses is made out of the sand. The sand is dirty. The sand, I, I don't even know how they do it. They say they melt the sand, they clean it up to make glasses that we, we use. I don't know if it's true, but that's what I heard. Or even the frame of the glasses, whatever is, what is the raw material, I do not know. But it's, it's frame, it's designed, it can be different color and all that. This shirt, the raw material of this shirt is a cotton, a cotton, right? But they, they use it somehow. How do they use that round? little cotton and join it together, clean it up to make it thin and to put color on it, put line on it. I do not know. But we know that the manufactured product, the finished product is always better than the raw material. The raw material cannot help you much. But the finished product is refined. It's a refined product. God created you, the woman, with the finished product. God created you, the woman, with the finished product. But the question is for, for you is, why are you feeling so bad? Why are you feeling so depressed? Why are you looking like God, like God is your enemy? God has created you better. You need to realize that. You need to realize that. You need to realize that. You need to stop worrying. You need to stop being depressed. You need to stop looking at yourself as a useless being. God has created you better. God has created you the woman better. Why you don't know that? Today, God is, is bringing it to you. This is a revelation. I have never heard this sermon preached the way I'm preaching it now. This is a revelation. God created you better. So originally, God didn't want you to be the one suffering the most. With childbearing pain and you have to be submitted and all that. It's sin that brought all that up. So God created you originally better. You, you, you say what is the value of this? The value of this is many women, they feel like God has put a burden on them that they don't like. So women don't like to be submitted to the men. They don't like it. With all the confusion of emotion, intuition and all that, they feel like they can bring many ideas. And often the ideas are confusing too. They, they think, ah, oh, the man is thinking only one thing. I'm thinking five and, uh, and opposing things. <laughs> So five things, I'm taking this, I'm like that, I'm like that, I'm, I want to do my hair like this, I want to do my hair, I want to palm my hair, I want to comb my hair, I want to braid my hair, I want to wear a skirt, I want to wear this variety. I, if the woman thinks variety, it means that she has more ideas, she has better ideas, and she has more ideas, so she can, she, she want to dominate. But the God said you have to submit. So you, the woman, you have to know that God has created you better. Originally. But you lost that better quality through sinning. So what am I saying now? The, the, the issue is uh, that, that after sin, now God told the man that God punished the woman and said, hey, let, let's read it together. Rakore <laughs> God told the woman that she will uh, he will multiply the pain of uh, her childbearing moment and all that. Okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 3 verse 16. The Bible say, And to the woman he said, I will greatly multiply your sorrow and your conception. In sorrow you shall bring forth children 
And this is the part I'm going to. And your desire shall be to your husband, and he shall rule over you. My goodness, sir. Anyway, what I'm saying is, why you, the woman uh, that was created better, and the situation has turned around, you are created better, but now punishment is on you, and God is saying your punishment is your desire shall be towards your husband. And will your husband love you when your desire is towards him? No. They will your, your husband show you more affection when your desire, your desire is towards your, your husband? No. The, the Bible says your desire shall be towards your husband. He will not kiss you. He will not hug you. But he shall rule over you. That's a revelation. The, the, the woman, you, 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 your desire will be towards your husband. Look at women today. They want a man to validate them. If the, a man tell a woman you are crazy, that woman can be depressed for the rest of your life. When the man tell a woman you are ugly, that woman will be depressed for the rest of your, her life. Why? Because it's a curse on the woman that the man shall rule over her. Her desire shall be towards the husband. But the husband will not answer favorably. The, 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 the wife will come and say, Oh, sweetie, I need, I need you. I need you to hug me. I need you to love me. I need you to show me that I'm pretty and all that. Will the man do that? No. The Bible says the man shall rule over you. When you decide to ask him, instead of him coming marvelously and hug you and love you and make you feel good, but he shall rule over you. He shall rule over you. And why in the world? Why in the world? Somebody that will rule over you. You'll be turning him for your support. You'll be turning room for, for your moral strength. Why in the world will you be turning to the man? Because you don't know the word of God. But God is bringing, you to, bringing it to you today. You don't know the word of God. You know the story of Genesis. You know the story of the creation of man and a woman. But you never catch the revelation like this before. Oh, the, the Bible said that. The Bible said your desire shall be towards your husband. Will he love you? He will not love you. But he shall rule over you. Ha! Genesis chapter 3, verse, uh, verse 16. Your desire shall be to your husband. And he shall rule over you. My goodness. So how will you, why will you depend on that person? Why? For your moral support. Why, why will you, everything you do, have to be validated by that man? Why? That man that was created rough, with a raw material. And you, you are created with a fine material. You are created with a final product. Why will you be turning to him? for your support. What am I saying? Am I saying you should become a lesbian now? The devil is a liar. Am I saying you should become a feminist? Wanting the man, the woman to be above the man? The devil is a liar. Because the situation has already turned. God said the woman should submit to the man. Don't fight that. Because if you fight the other of God, God will deal with you. But what am I saying? I'm saying you should go to God. Go to God for your support. What am I saying? I'm saying your dependency should be on God. You should go to God and say, God, fill me up. You should go to God and say, God, satisfy me. Oh, hallelujah. You the woman listening to me. Don't expect men to love you because the truth of the matter is science has proven it. Prove it. Statistics have proven that a man can never love a woman to the fullness of her expectation. A man can never love a woman to the fullness of expectation. If the man he thinks he's doing his best to please the woman, the woman will never be pleased because the desire of the woman shall be towards the husband. But the husband will not fulfill the desire, but the husband shall rule over her. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. This is not to encourage oppression. Oppression is bad. Oppression of a man or a woman is bad. Violence of, of a, a man or a woman is bad. But what I'm saying to you is the decree of God exists already. That when you desire the man to love you, when you desire the man to be supported for you, he will not be there for you. And I'm telling you to turn to God for your support. God who is perfect. God who created you. God who has created you with a final brother. That God can fill you up. That God can satisfy you. Oh, hallelujah. Nakizeme ye verun tabari. 
Holy Ghost, grab the minds uh, of every woman listening to me right now. Uh, oh, teach them the revelation you are giving me right now. Uh, open the spiritual understanding uh, to grab this so that it can change the life. Uh, what am I saying? You are a woman, uh, a young woman or a married woman. Uh, don't be depending on your husband to fill you up uh, because you will never be able to do it. Uh, you stress the man out. Uh, if you want him to fulfill you, uh, the man can never fulfill you. Uh, but the man can only stress you out. Uh, even if he try, it will not be enough. Uh, many of us, we are trying. We are trying to please the woman, but we can never fulfill it. Uh, why? Because uh, it's a curse that God has put on the woman. Uh, woman, you need to turn to God. Uh, women, you need to turn to God. Uh, oh, hallelujah. And Jesus has validated it. The woman, when he resurrected, there were many women that played a good role in the, in the life of Jesus. When Jesus resurrected, it was a woman who was the first person to see Jesus. To show that Jesus had that connection with women. Jesus is saying, my father created you out of the finished products. You have lost it. I came to raise you up. I came to validate you so you can get your original quality back. Oh, the church of God is called the bride. The bride, the woman. Jesus is the groom. And uh, the church is the bride. The bride. Meaning, the church is a symbol of a woman. Jesus is coming back for that church to show you that you are precious. No, Jesus is not coming back to a man. The church is not called uh, the, the, groom, the, the, the groom. No, but the bride to validate you. That you, the woman, you need to, if you can get in touch with God, the power of God will do something in your life. You'll be very valuable to humanity. You'll be very valuable to God. Uh, instead of being confused, uh, in, instead of competing with your girlfriends, uh, instead of competing with your fellow women uh, on what to wear and how to look, at, look like, uh, Instead of trying to deny your natural beauty that God has given you, uh, by embellishing yourself, uh, by putting a lot of things on you, uh, who most women don't like what they look like, uh, but God has created you with the final product. Uh, God has created you better than the man. Uh, stop attempting to please men. Uh, stop attempting to attach men to yourself. Uh, oh, you need to please God. Uh, you need to please God. Am I saying you should not please your husband? You better try to please your husband because God asks you to play your role in the family. But what I'm saying is, don't look at the man for the fulfillment of your life. Don't look at the man for the satisfaction of your mind, of your heart. The biggest desire you should have is to seek God. No meaning that you should neglect your responsibility of a wife of a mother and all that. No, 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 that's what we are saying. If that's what you think, you misunderstand what I'm saying. But I'm saying, turn to God for your fulfillment. Only God can fill you. You are created better. Jesus loved you so much. When he resurrected, it was a woman who saw him first. Jesus had Mary, Mary Magdalene, and all these precious women. And finally, the church is called a woman, the bride that Jesus is coming for. Women, you have more value than you think. Sin has messed things up. We know that. But look at the word of God. That's say your desire shall be towards your husband. Most husbands cannot love the woman. When the woman, the same when a woman say you, oh, my husband is so nice, the, that man should jump happy. Why? Because tomorrow she might not say that. Because the level of love that she needs, the level of affection that she needs, the man cannot fulfill that. He can try, 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 he'll be frustrated. He can try, try, he'll be frustrated. Or if he try, he think he read it. He think the woman should be happy for her. Tomorrow what happened? The woman is empty again. And they call it the love tank of a woman is empty. Or the, the tank is full today, you have to fill it again tomorrow. It disappears day by day and all that. What am I saying? You woman listening to me. If you don't give your, your, your life, it's not given to Jesus Christ. Give your life to Jesus. Without Jesus, you cannot do anything. Without Jesus, you'll be frustrated until you die. Do you know that most women have never been real to themselves all their life? 
they born into society, they born into their emotions, uh, they, and, and they, are, they have a fake lifestyle. Uh, they are not happy with how they are naturally. All the real desire, they do not show it. Uh, they like to show a desire that is the, the image of the world. Uh, they they want to portray an image to the world and they are themselves. Uh, why? Because the desires are messed up. Uh, no, because it's a punishment of God on them. Uh, a woman who spent many hours to do a hair just so the man can say you look pretty. She will spend four hours so the man can say in one minute you look very beautiful. That's craziness. Uh, I'm not saying you shouldn't please the man, uh, but you shouldn't use that to dominate your life. Uh, seek God for solutions. Uh, I'm asking you to turn to Jesus and to turn to God. Uh, God created you better than he created the man. Uh, go enjoy that. Uh, Go and die, die in the name of Jesus Christ. God created the woman better. The woman has lost it in sin. And the, and the woman should not be expecting the man to fulfill her. But the woman should depend on God Almighty. God has brought this message to you. You have the responsibility of sharing with groups of women. Because this message is powerful. It's beyond me. It's beyond me. And I don't see why the Spirit of God wanted me to go a little powerful. More than usually. I don't speak in tongues generally when I'm preaching, but I happen. In the beginning, you saw that. Talk about power. There, there is a power now circulating on you. If I were you, I'll go on my knees and pray to God. If I were you, women, you will cry. Some of you are crying right now. Cry and say, God, thank you for bringing this sermon to me. My husband, I cannot put too much pressure on him to fulfill me. My husband cannot do it. But you, God, who created me better, you can fulfill me. You can make me feel very good, feel like a finished product. Hallelujah, somebody. If you are listening to me, you have not given your life to Jesus. You'll be frustrated until you die. Many women are, are like that. Even in the church, many women are like that. But if you give your life to Jesus, Jesus, take over your life. Jesus will fulfill you. Your desire will not be towards your husband, but towards God. And when your desire towards God, God will fulfill you. God will fulfill you. And you'll be an accomplished woman. My sister, my mother, my wife, whoever is listening. A woman. God created you better than he created the man. But you did never see that. You are always competing to attract men's attention. And that's your problem. You should turn to God, not to men. Again, we are not saying people should become lesbian. The devil is a liar. You go to hell. You belong to the devil if you are a lesbian. We don't say you should become a feminine. Now get married. Just be on you. Fight against men. No, 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 no. The Bible says you should submit to the men. Submit. If you don't submit, you have wrong with God. You have problem with men too. But what we are saying is don't depend on men to fulfill you. Because most women do. Ah, my boyfriend, my ex boyfriend told me I'm ugly and I'll never be happy again. I don't want to date again because uh, men are crazy. Men told me I'm terrible and this and that. Depend on God who created you with the final product. If you haven't given your life to do so. And, and genuinely, we're not talking about becoming religious. Give your life to Jesus. Meaning you surrender your life to him. Everything you're doing is controlled by the word of God. Not say I give my life to Jesus. You're living for yourself. Your decision is what pleases you that you do know. When you give your life to Jesus, Jesus controls your life. Jesus said, don't go there, you don't go. The moment you give your life to Jesus, whatever Jesus wants you to do, that's what you do. Not what you feel like. What you feel like. If it's not lined up with Jesus, you don't do it. That's what it means. Give your life to Jesus. I'm sick and tired of people saying they give their life to Jesus. But they dominate everything. That's craziness. Give your life to Jesus. And as a woman, I'm telling you, as a man, I'm a man, but I'm telling you, if you give your life to Jesus as a woman, and you do what I'm saying, your life will be more fulfilled than the life of men. First of all, you save a lot of trouble on yourself, attempting to please men. Women's life is crazy. They fight with themselves. Everybody want to do this. Hey, I want to do better than that woman. And after that, they want to attract men too. 
So their heart is just a turmoil. Jesus is telling you right now that he created you better. And if you give your life to Jesus, or you already give your life to Jesus, but you don't know, you are behaving like with every other woman. You want to look better in church instead of coming to see God. You, are, or you must worry about your look. Or you must worry about what men think about you. Rather than thinking about what God think about you. What is God thinking about you? See God. Let God become your intimate friend. We're not saying you should do this and neglect your husband. We're not saying that. But we're talking about let God be your source of provision. Let, 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 let your strength be tied to God. Number one, you really quench men of the, 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 the false expectation you have from them. Your husband or whoever have men is in your life, you relinquish them. You let them go. Say, oh man, I wanted this man to fulfill me. He wasn't doing it. It's not his fault. It's me. It's me who need God, not the man. That doesn't mean you should disassociate, disassociate from your relationship. No. But depend on God. If the man love you, fine. If the man show some love, appreciate it. But your real source is God, not the man. I hope you understand this message. May God touch you. May God bless you right now. Let's pray. If you haven't given your life to Jesus, do so right now. I'll pray with you. Do so right now. Talk to Jesus. Say, Jesus, I want to give you my life. My life has been fostered as a woman. I want to give you my life now. So you can make me be fulfilled as a finished product. Someone created with a finished product. Pray. Father, I pray for these people who want to give you their life. I pray that you touch them with your power that is already in operation here and accept them and change their life and give them this thing we are talking about that when they realize that they are, they are created with a finished product, you move madly in their life. Change their life completely in Jesus' name. Now I pray for the people. You are a woman, you are saved, but you never realize this. I want to pray for you so God can give you the strength to change your life around and depend on God, not on men. Expect God for your approval, not on men. And again, don't get confused and become lesbian and all that now. Lesbianism is a sin. And, and don't become feminist. Feminism is the understanding that you want men to women to compete against me. No, God says, so me, so me. So I'm saying, so you can be fulfilled in your position. You know, there's a president, there's a prime minister, the president plays his role. The prime minister too. The prime minister cannot say, I'm not a president, so I cannot do my job. The prime minister can be influential and all that. So you can play your role. Being submitted is not being devilish. Being submitted is not being your life is over. No. You can still play your role. You have your role, your role to play too. So let's pray now. Father, I pray for these women. Your power has already made the job easy. Let their life change from this moment. Let your power touch them from this moment. So they can connect with you and be fulfilled. And the more they connect with you, let them be fulfilled. Let them read your word. Let them pray to you. Let them have communication in the spirit with you. And let the life change to validate that you have created them better. Father, I thank you for this preaching moment. Holy Ghost, thank you for your power. I pray that everybody listening to me, whatever problem is in their life, I pray that your power will transform the situation. I pray that you should build things in their life that anybody listening to me will cancel the spirit of death from them. We cancel the spirit of trouble from them. We cancel poverty. We cancel confusion. We cancel uh, emotionalism. We cancel lesbianism out of them. We decree that the power of God establish the will of God in their life. Let them never be the same again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we thank you. We worship you. Thank you for this vessel we have used. Replenish it and bless the vessel with the same blessing you serve people in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, we finished this message. I'm sorry the message is a little long, but I'm sure you have been blessed. May God bless you.
Thank you. Share this message with our people, with all women. Share them on social social media, a group of women or whatever, and come back and be blessed again by all the sermons that God used us to preach. May God bless you. Thank you.